All right, good morning, class. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a GIF. Uh, we went over this yesterday. We're going to be using Photoshop and the video timeline. So the first thing you want to do is you open up Photoshop. I've got mine open. I'm using CS6. You guys will be using Creative Cloud for the most part. Um, so things will be pretty similar, but there might be a couple things that are a little bit different. Um, first thing you want to do is go up here and you might be set to Essentials, which will give you the basic Photoshop layout. Um, you want to change that to Motion. So do that, and that gives you the layout for the motion um, and with all the tools that you need to be able to create moving animations, hand-drawn, GIFs, uh, and so forth. So first thing you want to do is create a new file. And since you're doing a GIF, that'll be for the internet, you're going to want to do something that's a little bit smaller. Um, so these, this option here of size doesn't really matter. You're going to want to be in pixels. Um, sometimes it might be set to inches when you're here, but we're going to talk about pixels, uh, the little points within a image. So for us, let's do 400. Uh, I'm using tab to switch between the items and 400. And then resolution. Whenever you're doing anything that's going to be seen on a screen, that's you want that to be 72 pixels per inch. If you're doing something that's print, uh, you want it to be 180 or 300 uh, uh, dots per inch or pixels per inch. And RGB mode, you want it to be, or color mode, you want it to be an RGB color. That's what's seen on a screen. If you were doing print, you would choose CMYK, but we're not even going to touch that in this class. So just RGB. And the rest of this you can kind of leave alone. Oh, or actually, square pixels, keep that as it is. And let's title this um, Example GIF 1. Do OK. And so that gives us a small square to begin with. So the assignment that I gave was to choose a current event with um, one location, one, uh, the current event that shows the location, a object, and a, a, a figure. Um, and I'm going to show you an example of what I chose and walk you through the steps. So I'm going to go with this recent news from NPR, or it's not exactly from NPR, but uh, X-rays can open secrets of ancient scrolls. I think that one's pretty interesting. Uh, you're going to be able to read our technology is to the point where we can read these scrolls that were trapped in uh, in in lava. Um, and because if we were to try and open them up, they picture. I think this one will work pretty well. Let's go with that one. We're going to do the same process. Copy image. This. No, don't want to save it. I want to create a new file. You can say new by doing control N or command N. These are from the clipboard. I'm going to paste it using control or command V. And that's there. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select that's much better. Select all of the background and delete it. And then if I get if I um, get rid of the background here, then I have a whole image that I can work with. And I want to deselect. Um, so select, deselect to get rid of all of that the marching ants. Um, they're just kind of a distraction. So then I want to save this. And this is going to become one of my assets. And what I do is I'm going to make a new folder and call it um, GIF example. Go into it and make a new folder for assets. And then I'm going to save this as X-rays. Scan. All right, so 
we've got one image. Now, I want... This is one of the philosophers that has uh, his scrolls locked up. Um, his name is, I can tell you, Philodemus. So we're going to use him in our GIF. I'm going to copy image, bring it back, create a new screen, and then click OK, and paste it in, edit, paste, and he's there. Use the magic wand. I'm going to bump tolerance up to 10. So I can delete just parts of this at a time if I need to. So I'm going to save this, save as Philodemus, and I'm saving these as Photoshop. Uh, the format gives you a lot of options here. Um, for these, you want to save them as Photoshops, um, those will be easier to work with. And then, let's see. So. I want an image of the scrolls, and this is a pretty hard one to find. So I'm going to work with this. I'm going to show you a different method for getting a selection. It's a little bit more advanced, but I think you guys can work with it. So I'm going to right click, copy image, and then I'm going to create a new folder. And then I'm going to paste it, edit, paste. And if I try and do selection tool, it's going to take forever. It's going to be the magic wand tool. So I'm going to use what's called the pen tool. First, I'm going to deselect that. And I want the pen tool. And what this is going to help me do is create a, um, a map around the form here that is pretty accurate. Uh, let's, let's, let's get zoomed in on this a little bit. And I just pressed Control Zero to zoom in there. So what I can do is draw lines that go all the way around this. And if you click and drag without lifting up your mouse or if you're using a tablet, uh, you create what's called a Bezier curve. And these are takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can draw all the way around. There's other ways to do this. You can use the lasso tool, tool, the magnetic lasso tool. Uh, there's a whole range of ways to do this. And then what we're going to do is create a selection from this. So all we're going to do is take out this one or actually take out everything else but this one piece. Now, what if I did a line around here that was way off and I needed to go back and edit it? So like say I come out there and I'm like, oh, I can't really fix it right now. So I come back, I'm gonna complete this right now, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. The way you complete it is, you see next to the pen, a little circle forms, if I'm off that, it's not there. And then if I go back and I click on any other pen, uh, mark any anchor point, completes it. Now I've got a line that goes all the way around it. I'm not going to worry about this for right now. I'm going to come back. Well, actually, yeah. I'm going to fix that by going to the direct selection tool. And if I click, this is, I'm going to get the, it's the white arrow. Um, when you are on the toolbar, if you click and hold, you get a, sometimes a sub menu. You'll know there's a sub menu if there's a little arrow. Most of these have sub menus. So I click on the line, and if I click and make this point black, I can then drag it back in. And then I'm just going to go back to move. So 
the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a path out of this to help us get a selection. Usually path window shows up right here. It's not there right now. So when a window doesn't show up, you got to go to the window. And then we go to paths, and then it shows up. And now I've got a work path that we can work with. Cancel. If we right click on this and say make selection, and just say, okay, we're going to make a new selection. It gets a pretty tight line around the thing that we want. The marching ants come back. Uh, it's a whole lot easier than trying to do the magic wand tool. Now, if I were to delete this, it deletes that, and that's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to undo that, Control Z, selection still there. You can inverse the selection, so instead it deletes everything else around it. So now it's going to delete everything else but this. Let's delete. Hey, there you go. I got this weird looking bone uh, scroll thing. If I zoom out and go back to layers, we can get rid of the background. And now I've got this scroll. Pretty cool. Uh, go to the select, deselect. You can do a hotkey for deselect doing control D. I'm going to do that from now on because it's a little bit easier. File. Let's see. I'm going to say scroll. And then we need one more, just the, the background. So for the background, let's go to, let's just do lab. Images. Let's go with um, I'm trying to look for one where this will kind of fit in. I think this looks that one looks pretty good. Yeah, let's go with that. View image. Copy image. So back. Create a new document. You can paste it in there using Control V. And there we go. And I'm just gonna save this. I don't need to mess with the background. Save as lab. Now, I've got all my assets together. In my example GIF, which I'm gonna save it first in a spot. Save as. I'm gonna have it above my assets. Um, keep the assets separate from the rest of this. And so example GIF will stay in there for right now. And I want to bring in all of my assets. So went a little too fast. Uh, what you do is you go to File, and then Place. And this will put your objects inside the Photoshop in the best way. So you can do Place from here, and you just stretch them out. Um, this is the free transform box. And every time you see it, uh, if you hold down Shift and any of the arrow keys, you can drag out the edges and it'll stay proportional. Um, if I don't hold down Shift, then it gets a little wonky. Um, if I hold Shift, it goes back to being proportional. So let's, I'm going to keep that there. Um, You can also drag these in. Uh, that works too from your um, from your Explorer window or from uh, whatever window you have on whatever operating system you use. And so, in order to move past this frame, you need to hit Return uh, or Enter in order to set these. Uh, things into the actual frame. So I'm going to hit enter, and I need Philodemus and the x-ray scanner. Let me track these in. I'm just going to place them for right now. And these are brought in as smart objects, uh, which means we're doing non-destructive editing inside of Photoshop. So I want to, this guy's head is way too big. I am going to make it a lot smaller. So in order to do that, 
you need to go to edit and free transform. You can also do control T. Shrink it down. I'm gonna make it like that big. And I want whenever you change if you change the order on the layers here, your um, whatever's on top will show up on the top. So imagine you're like making a sandwich. Uh, and this is your top piece of bread, the lab is your other piece of bread, uh, and everything is in between it. And so I want to make the scroll a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform, Shrink It Down. Let's do, I'm going to do it just about that big. Um, and I want this lab, I think it's too bright. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. Um, just to make it more like a settled background. So let's make that like 40%. That's a little too much. Let's do like 60%. Cool. Now we got something. And if you click and hold down Control and select, you can select all of these. And I want to move these all. So I'm going to move these all together. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. All right. So now that we've got this, we're ready to start making our timeline. Um, one thing, I think I want the scroll to go behind the scanner, just so, there you go, it looks like it'll actually go inside. The movement that I'm going to work with is having the scroll go inside like this, it disappears for a minute, and then uh, his head pops out the other side, it moves this way. Um, the way I did that by quickly selecting layers is if you are above any image and you hit control, it'll automatically shift the layer to that. So right now I just press control and I'm on the x-ray scanner. Um, say I want to move the lab. If I try, I'm over the lab and I don't press control, it's still going to move that. If I hit control while I'm on the lab, it'll move it back and forth. So these are just little tips and tricks. Get that over like that. Great. So, next step. Um, since we got this, we should save it. Uh, so, file, save, just to keep our stuff together. And from here, we're going to do create video timeline. And this is going to take all of these, these layers, and put them into the timeline. There we go. Pretty easy. So, when you see this timeline, there's a couple things you want to do first before you even start editing. You're going to make sure your options are all set. You want to make sure your enable timeline shortcut keys are set. Uh, you want to loop the playback. And you want to set the timeline frame rate. This is really important. If you don't do this at the beginning, it's going to be a pain in the butt later on. Um, we're going to be working with 12 frames per second, um, animating on twos. And so for right now, um, thinking about how we want the, so I need to move the scroll back to where I can see it. Okay. So I don't want this head to show up first. I want this head to um, show up last. If here I've got my playhead, and right now, whenever I scroll through, it just shows whatever layers are present. Um, and it works the same way as the layers over here. So whatever stacked on top shows. So as soon as I click and drag to reduce the size of this, that head is gone if the playhead doesn't see it or doesn't go over it. As soon as it gets to it, it's there, it's back. So for right now, I'm just going to leave that as it is. The lab we want to be present, the scroll, um, I'm going to start it just a little bit later, and the x-ray scanner, I want to stay there. So those are, those are set. Those are good. All right. Now we need to do some motion. So first things first, how do we do motion? Well, if you click on these little triangles, you can um, 
set keyframes, which do smooth animation inside the GIFs. Reduce this just a little bit. So you can see what we're doing. Um, and I want to start this outside the frame. And where this starts, if I'm going to have this transform, I start a keyframe. So I hit that, and a little keyframe comes up here. Um, this is a little golden diamond. Then I move the playhead to where I want the timing of the event to stop. So what I and then what I do is I'm going to move the position of this inside here to disappear, and it creates another keyframe. So if I were to move the playhead back, it does it for me automatically. So that goes in like this. Pretty cool. So then, let's see, what's the timing of this? Well, let's get his head to pop out out of here. Um, so then if I go back and I want to do the, um, have his head move out the other way, at that point, and then continue on. Let's see, right here. Um, continue moving past the frame. There we go. It creates, creates another keyframe. So if I go back, scroll comes in, head comes out. And I think this is a little long, so I'm going to reduce the time of this just a little bit. When I reduce the longest one, um, the playhead up here immediately shortens it. You can also adjust this to the exact ins and outs and the start times. Um, so if I were to only have it go from here to here, it would only play between these two points. I want it to be towards the end of all of your stuff. And then if I hit play or spacebar, it'll play it. And it might be a little bit laggy, just uh, laggy or pixelated just because it's an in-program preview. When it's exported, it'll actually look OK. Um, I mean, this is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty smooth. We could do something where it's like there's one more layer above here that sits above um, the face part to make it a little bit smoother. But for our purposes, I think that's fine. Stop. And then we need to save this because this is done. So we go to File, Save for Web. This is important. This is how we save the GIFs. And you want to, up here, it might be on JPEG. You want to select GIF. Next thing you want to do is do Colors. Um, we want the most. Totally fine. Um, it'll change the amount of memory that it takes, depending on how many colors you're using and how, what how big your file is, uh, 250k is fine. That's a totally good size. Um, the rest of the stuff you really have to worry about, except for down here and here, looping options. I want this to loop forever. Uh, and this, you can change the image size. Uh, it won't change what you've saved your file as. So your file, if you change this to 200 by 200, it will not change what you actually saved your original file as. And then do save. And so I'm going to save this in my GIF example. And you want to save HTML and images. This allows you to embed the image on a web page uh, just in case you want to uh, have a, do some more web programming. But we're mainly going to be concerned with just doing the images. So HTML and images, example GIF. So that's fine, that has HTML right there. It'll save a separate folder with your image in it. So save. And then if I go to my folder, I'm going to GIF example. It saves a separate folder with your image inside. So if I go to this 
and then right click and say open with um, I'm going to embed it in the email I'm not the biggest fan of Internet Explorer so if I do this and then compose and then I have my window open here and drag it in we have our GIF. So that's all set. That's how you do it. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. Thanks.